In this video, I'm going to go over the stock suspension for the LDRC drift car. Um, some adjustments and mods you can do to get it to perform a little bit better than it does coming out of the box. Now they do come with these little limiters that snap in to the swing arms right here for the front and back. And those help fix the ride height after you get um, this car out of the box. Some of, them, some of them have them already in, some of them don't. Mine didn't have them in. So if you do and you don't know how to, uh, if you don't have them in there and you just got it um, and you haven't seen anybody do it yet, it's pretty easy. Uh, the front set has this little notch right here on it and the back set has nothing there. So that's the difference between the front and the back. But all you have to do is just keep that notch facing away from the, the chassis, like towards the uh, wheel. And then you just snap it into place right there. And that actually brings the wheel up from you know being really far down if you got a lot of room in the wheel well. So that's what that does. It just it's it's a little limiter that brings it up to where it'll be up in the wheel well. Because when I got mine out of the box, it was like I felt like it was like that high up. But once you put the limiters in, it brings it down to where it looks normal. The only problem with these limiters is it does limit the uh, suspension of the wheels to where it can only really bounce up a little bit in the wheel well, but it has no sag to keep like the wheels contacting the ground uh, when you're bouncing up and down. So it's actually like, it almost stiffens up the uh, suspension too much. And I wasn't a big fan of these. And I, I don't like this design at all anyway, because these are easy to pop out. If you put too much pressure on the swing arm, like they can pop out. Well, of course, this one won't pop off. My other side would always pop off, but yeah, this one would always pop out. This one's a little bit stronger. Um, but they're plastic and they're flimsy and they're just not a great design. So I just opted to keep them off and to fix the ride height and everything, I'll go over what I did to, um, to fix that. But that's all you have to do if you wanna pop in those limiters right when you get your car out of the box to help the ride height out. And uh, so what I did to fix the uh, suspension, because um, like I said, once you get it, and had the limiters in it's really stiff and there's no sag so i had to fix it to where i could get some sag and what i did for the rear end here was uh, i'm also i flipped these uh swing arms around to give me uh, more caster so the way that this this spring fits into the to these um these swing arms is actually different than how it would be from the stock setup so just be aware of that when i'm talking about this that this will be a little bit further away, these springs, because these would actually be the opposite sides. Just, just a heads up. Go watch my other video on caster, and I explain uh, that in more detail. So what I had to do to get the ride height up, but also have enough sag to where the wheel would sag down when you're like, when you're going up and down, say you're like going like on some um, bumpy surfaces or whatever, you want the wheels to sag down while you're going up and down. So there's, it's better for your suspension. It's not stiff and just like solid to where it doesn't want to move at all. I had to really maneuver these springs and twist, twist it at the joints. So at these like corner joints here on, the, on that corner there and on this corner here, I had to hold uh, with pliers on one side and then take another set of pliers on the opposite side and then just twist. Um, to kind of almost flatten these springs out a little bit more because they were a little bit too, they're bent a little bit too much to where it was giving me uh, way too much uh, ride height and everything like that. So I had to flatten them down a little bit. And this rear end one was really tricky, especially after I swapped these, uh, these swing arms around to where uh, this side pretty much was perfect, but I couldn't really get this side to match it well, even though they, the spring looked exactly the same when I looked at it from all sides, it looked like I had it perfectly, you know, um, symmetrical but for some reason it was tough to get this one to match that one exactly with the the ride height above the the body and also the amount of sag that it would give me so i had to kind of tweak this one a little bit more I had to bend it right there more to kind of compensate and now this one uh, matches this side so i don't know it's kind of weird you might have to sit here and play around with the spring for a little bit until you get it perfect but just try to try to bend at these joints to fix the torque of the spring to give you the right kind of suspension that you're looking for. And uh, that's really all you can do with these, these stock springs. I'm not a fan of this. Um, I will be swapping out to some aftermarket shocks and stuff here in a little bit. I just wanted to show you this first before I do that mod, uh, you know, just for those that don't have the ability to swap out to shocks 
and you're stuck with this spring. This is something you can do to, um, to fix the suspension in the rear and the front the way you want it, uh, you know, for the ride height and the amount of sag that you get. So you're always getting the wheels to touch the ground without it being too stiff. And then I had to loosen this one up. Uh, you can see how far away, so when they move, there's enough room for that spring to kind of bounce up and down a little bit uh, on both sides. And then also these screws, I had to just loosen up about a millimeter or so, so there's just enough room in there for the spring to get a little bit of wiggle as well. Um, so you don't, wanna, you don't wanna tighten them all the way down to where it's pinching them, because that'll actually mess with the, the height um, of, you know, of where the, the wheel is going to sit. So you, you might, I mean, depending on how it goes for you when you bend this around, you might have to screw it all the way down. For me, I had to keep at least one millimeter of space on each side to compensate and to give it enough room and to give it that sag that I'm looking for and also to keep the ride height nice and low, but also have enough suspension to where it, you know, it, the driving experience is, is what I'm looking for. So the front originally goes, well, at least on mine, it was across the top. Some of the models actually already have it on the bottom, but mine was going across the top here. So I took all the screws out. I got rid of the middle screw. Uh, I kept the two on the sides, but I flipped them down to the bottom as well as the spring. I flipped the spring down to the bottom. And then uh, I think I might have flipped it upside down as well, the spring, to give me the kind of uh, spring I was looking for. I kind of forget exactly what I did, but I had to bend at these joints as well because originally this part of the bar was kind of sticking up up, up here a little bit. Um, and I was getting the right amount of uh, suspension and sag I was looking for, but this part of the bar was sticking too far this way. So when I, when I put it down and pushed it to hit the ground, it would bottom out on that bar. Uh, before the chassis even really got close to the ground. So it was kind of limiting the amount of, of, of suspension I could get down underneath here. So I had to almost flatten this spring out to get rid of that problem and then kind of just work these, these little sidebars on the springs to get them where I want them so the wheel well, or so the wheel is uh, in the wheel well where I want it and also give me the amount of sag I was looking for. So it's really hard to explain and, and show you. You're gonna have to kind of play around with it yourself but I feel like putting the spring in the bottom this way definitely helps out the front to make it a little bit softer and give you a little bit more control on how you want it set up. Um, you know, and, and also it gives you the ability to get rid of those limiters, but still get the wheels in the wheel well where they're supposed to be and not have to worry about those little pieces of plastic down there anymore. And then also you get that sag you, you want um, that I'll show you. I'll put the body on and I'll show you here in a second. But yeah, I was, I was tired of those little plastic clips, so I'm glad to finally get rid of those. And this, this stock suspension is much better now. It's the way I like it. But either way, it really doesn't matter because I'm going to be swap, swapping out the front and the back with actual shocks. Um, but like I said, if you don't have the means to do that, this is probably your best bet to go with if you want to um, increase the performance of the shocks with the uh, stock springs that, that come with the car. So let me put the body on real quick and then I'll give you a better example of what I'm talking about when it comes to the sag and what it needs to look like um, when you're when you're driving the car and like it's bouncing around on like uneven surfaces and stuff and i'm really not a fan of these screws going into plastic because i mean how many times are we going to be able to unscrew and screw these little uh, metal screws into plastic until they start getting stripped out i mean it, it the plastic feels pretty strong and as long as you keep the threads and everything lined up the same every time and it shouldn't really eat away, but I mean, over time, I feel like it's going to wear down and then, you know, these will start stripping out. So maybe I'll figure out some kind of little metal, metal piece I can put in there to kind of have something to screw into that's not gonna strip out on me over time. So that'll be later on. But, so yeah, so the sag, see how the sag's down? That's what I want, but when it's sitting on the table, it'll be like that. And then I, I still have the amount of suspension I want. So I, when it bounces around, but it, at, at least the wheel will, Will, you know, try to make sure it's always making contact on the ground when, when it's bouncing up and down. Same with the front end. So it looks like it's pretty goofy, but let's see. Yeah, but it actually when I put it on the table, it'll be sitting there and I'll still have the amount of suspension I'm looking for, but it also has that sag to where it's always trying to make contact on the ground no matter how much the car is getting thrown left or right. So let me move the camera here. Okay. So you can see the ride height looks good it's a uh, it's a really nice low stance and everything which is what i wanted 
and there's still plenty of bounce there, but when I lift up, you can see the wheel does the, the best it can to stay on the ground if it was hopping up and down. Same with the front. So when there's a lot of movement, so when your car is rocking back and forth, left or right, it's keeping contact on the ground. So, and I'm, you know, like I said, you gotta move those little springs around and kind of maneuver them to where you get both, you know, sides to be even. So this side is the same as the other side. So the amount of sag is the same and the amount of ride height here is the same. And obviously the same thing for the front as well. So that's what you're looking for if you're gonna mess with the suspension and you want some sag, but also have a low ride height and everything. The, you know, that's the kind of tweaks you have to make uh, with these stock springs to get that working. And you have to get rid of those little plastic limiters uh, to make this work as well. Because those plastic limiters will not allow you to have the wheel sag like that. They'll just keep it stiff and it'll basically just be like this when you try to rock it. It won't, it won't go down. It'll just lift off the ground. So that's all you need to do if you want to adjust the stock springs on your LDRC drift car. If you have any more uh, questions or whatever, just leave them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And once again, thanks for watching and I hope you have a good day.